Avatar, Ted Sachs. We had a spicy TFT clash, Milk versus Bebe, North America versus Korea, a classic matchup. What started off as an educational TikTok launched a 45-minute tirade on why this is wrong. I'll show you guys a clip in question, summarize the 45 minutes, and then summarize the points that were made. So let's just get right into it. So the play in question was a TikTok looking over a replay of someone playing in the first patch of set 7. Milk analyzes the situation and says that if you have lots of one cost pairs, you shouldn't level up in order to hit one cost two stars because leveling odds get worse for one cost units as you level up. The player in question, Bebe, hears about this on his stream and then goes on a 45 minute clap back saying how Milk is a clown, he gets lucky, only knows two decks, misplays often. Since not all of us have 45 minutes to spare, luckily there is a transcript that someone made. I believe his name is Ink Horror, and I'll link the transcript in the description below, and of course I will condense it here too. What's hilarious about these opinions is that I know for a fact that North American players pretty much have zero respect for Korean players, and today I learned that Korean players don't respect North American players at all. That guy does not deserve to do that. I, that guy's just a clown that got lucky in tournaments over and over again, knowing like more two decks. That made like so many misplays. He's a joke. I mean, come on guys, right? I've never seen him play well. He wastes gold, he goes for like a, he, he doesn't know what to do even if he gets so lucky to hit level 9 at 50 gold. He buys the wrong units. He sucks guys, he sucks, right? He does not, he is not at a level to evaluate me, guys. Essentially, Bebe says that Milk is bad at the game because he jokes around, doesn't practice APM, and he never scouts. First things first, I think there are many different play styles in TFT, and yes, I've heard the argument before, there's only one exact correct play per turn, and I actually believe in this. However, as mere humans, I do not believe we have the ability to know the exact best turn every single turn over the course of a game, because in TFT, there are way too many decisions to make per turn. For example, if we look at chess, which is still an unsolved game, by the way, you have around 15 to 40 possible legal moves per turn. In TFT, we have too many to count, even on a simple turn such as stage 2-1. For example, first we pick our augment. We have three choices there and the choice to reroll. All those add different variations. Next, we have the option to buy units in our shop, and we also have the option to place each unit on one of 28 squares. So Nidalee has placing on every single square, has 28 versions, and then same thing with Vladimir and same thing with Skarner. So you could also do them in different combinations, which makes the amount of possibilities in a turn even higher. Not to mention we could level up, we could roll, we could buy all the units, we could buy one, two, three, four, five units, and we have to count every single combination of every possibility I listed here, plus placing each of these on one out of 28 squares, then you add in slamming items. As you guys can see, the number of possible moves you have in TFT, even in one turn, a simple turn such as stage 2-1 is already super, super duper high. So no, I do not believe humans are even remotely close to playing perfectly every single turn, and being rank 1 or iron 4 does not affect that notion. Back to the original point of different playstyles, to sum up, if a game is not solved, playstyles are allowed to exist even if they are hypothetically suboptimal. Some players can play aggressively by leveling up, some may not do that. Some play flex, some people force a couple of compositions, some people even force one composition. Is APM important? It sure helps. I wouldn't say it's the most important skill in TFT, but if we look at any sport, many of the greatest players in the world at a particular game don't always have every tool mastered. For example, in baseball, we have overweight pitchers, we have Hall of Famers who have fastballs who don't even throw over 90 miles per hour, and we also have Hall of Fame batters who can barely jog to first base. In a different sport, hockey, we have Wayne Gretzky who supposedly could barely do 10 push-ups, but he was the greatest player ever to play the game. Back to TFT, Bebe has said that he would take criticism, but only from players who are qualified to do so, such as Setsuko, Jing, EU streamers, St. Vicious, and Brazilian players, because they all put effort into the game. If you got lucky in a tournament and made a lot of money out of it, just be grateful. Don't like go shit-talking other people, right? Right, 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 right? He also goes on to say that worlds and tournaments are all RNG because TFT is an RNG game. I actually do agree with that. I don't think tournaments are the most representative of how good a player is because you simply just don't play enough games. At the same time, I don't think ladder is the best way to determine the best player because not everyone tries really hard on ladder. Some people are testing things. Some people simply don't care about grinding it. And God forbid, some people even want to just play to have fun when they're playing on ladder. For the record, if we look at qualifications for worlds. Milk has qualified for worlds twice and Bebe has not. Again, I know, 
I agree with Bebe that tournament results do not matter because the sample size is too small, but I do wonder what the qualification process is like for Korea and North America because Milk qualified for regionals mainly through ladder, so I do think he is good at both of them. Also regarding tournaments, uh, Milk actually skips most of the tournaments because he deems them a waste of time because the more time he puts into the game, the less worth it it becomes. I tried looking up the qualification process for the Korean regionals, but I couldn't find any info in English, so if someone does know, uh, please let me know down in the comments like how many ladder slots are available and how many tournament slots they have available for qualifying for Korean regionals. Baby also mentions that Milk is not a pro and like doesn't he have a different job or something like that and says that if clowns are going to diss pros that's not a good thing. That brings up the question of me thinking what even is a TFT pro because most people in the pro scene consider the scene a joke. I think it's a joke as well because there's not much at stake and a lot of the good players in the western world, mainly Europe, a lot of them quit because they couldn't devote their whole life to playing a video game because there's no money in it. Luckily in America, all the pro players here do streaming or join teams in order to keep playing TFT. But the fact that we lost a ton of good European players when they were considered the best regions in the very beginning of the game, we lose a lot of competition when a lot of the best players just drop out. I feel like if you want to compete, definitely go ahead and compete in TFT. But what is the definition of a pro? Is it someone whose full-time job is playing TFT? Is it someone who is competing for like the world championship? What is a pro TFT player? Who even knows, man? He also goes on to say that he doesn't respect the guy and that he's a joke in his opinion. And everybody knows on the inside and everyone makes fun of him because of his ridiculously slow APM and mechanics. There was kind of like a soft Q&A, and someone stated he's rank 1 every set, but then the response was, no, he's not rank 1 every set. The problem with you is you don't get your facts straight and you're a liar. So as far as I know, uh, Milk does hit high ranks in ladder pretty much every season. He's pretty much been doing that since set 1. I guess it depends how you define it, because rank 1 exchanges hands like so many times per season. It's actually ridiculous. And I know once he already qualifies for something, he just doesn't play ladder until like he needs to practice for a tournament. So maybe that could skew the perception of his ladder ranking. But if we look at some of the power rankings for North America, out of the six weeks of power rankings that we have, he averaged around 3.6 place in North America. And essentially how this is rated is a podcast invites some pro players um, and some other personalities to rank everyone in North America, and that is just how they make their list. I just took the average of the six editions that I found and that's what we got, so um, use that information however you will. He continues on saying how Milk came out of nowhere and attacked him for no reason, and then said, I quote, To be honest, I would just beat the guy up right here. Of course I can't use fire support, so I'm just like saying it, but yo, I would just beat the guy like here, like rigid right here, if he was right in front of me. I swear, dude, he needs to know his place. A few minutes later, Figuratively, never use violence. The stream closes off with Bebe wishing this didn't happen because it ruined his mood, and I really feel for him here. It's pretty much never fun being called out or criticized, and it for sure can ruin a day. My favorite part about this whole exchange is that, regarding the clip in question, we didn't get a conclusion on what the right answer is for whether you level to 4 on 2-1, level to 5 at the next stage, or just stay at a low level because we only heard the opinion of one player. I wish Bebe took one line to discuss this play, either defending it or saying it was a mistake, and personally, guys, like when you're playing on stream 10 plus hours per day, he's playing a lot of TFT, right? I'm assuming, guys, like the world we live in, players make mistakes, especially when you're playing that many games. I feel like picking out one game a player played and pointing out a mistake is not a direct attack, especially since Bebe wasn't even named in the TikTok video. The only part where it is questionable is the editing at the end of the TikTok. Uh, it was a little extra, but hey, I guess that's how life works sometimes. Hopefully things get recovered between these two, but I thought the whole event was pretty interesting. Personally, because of this, I'm looking forward to the next Worlds. I hope both of these players make it because that would be too fun to watch. Again, everyone does know already that like results at Worlds doesn't really matter that much because again, like sample size too small, but it's still nice to see a showdown. The alternative to this is maybe like a boxing match or something like that, but that would probably be too hard to organize. All in all, there could be a cultural difference uh, for the reason why people made their stuff. I guess technically, if they were close to each other, they may have asked each other like, yo, could I like use your clip in a thing? Because people use other people's clips all the time and you don't really need other people's permission under like fair use, for example. It's essentially how like pretty much every reaction channel is made. But there's also a way to deal with this offline 
Um, for example, sometimes I run into issues with other, other people and either I DM them or they DM me about it and then we just fix it there instead of going on like public things. Um, but I guess like cultures are different. I've never really been to Korea. Don't know too much about how they work there. But from a North American standpoint, it does seem like an overreaction. It seems like there was a lot of pent up rage about this person from before. And this was just a convenient time to let it all out, I guess. Um, my analysis may be a bit biased because I am from North America. But do let me know your thoughts on which region is better, North America or Korea. Who's in the right? Who's in the wrong? Comments down below. And also, what would you have done in that situation? Would you level up to level 4? Would you level up to level 5? Or would you stay level 3 the whole time? That's going to be it for me. I tend not to do these things that often, but I thought it was pretty interesting. So wanted to share that with you guys. But I'll see you all later.